Hello, welcome back. This is Mr. Anderson for Math 130 Statistics, and we're going to be looking at section 9.2, testing the difference between two means uh, with independent samples using the t-test. Um, I strongly recommend that you go and watch my previous video on section 9.1 um, because you're going to find that this video is extremely short and I'll be taking some liberties to skip some explanation that was done in the previous video. Um, now in t-tests uh, we um, we don't know um, this the standard deviation of the entire group since we have such a small group we're going to use a lowercase s or if you're looking on the graphing calculator the capital letter s which um, I don't use a capital letter s because it looks like a five so be aware that anytime I use standard deviation or we should use standard deviations in t-tests it should be the lowercase s and this is to show that we have random samples again uh, we have n which is less than 30. Um, we have to have uh, normal groups or approximately normal groups. So um, I'm going to abbreviate that with approximately normal. So we need, we're definitely going to have smaller sample sizes and these are going to be independent groups again. And listen to the previous video to hear about that a little bit. Our formula is going to be very similar to our Z formula. Um, we're still going to subtract our um, two averages, and we're then going to subtract our mu's, but since these mu's are uh, ostensibly the same, that will be zero. And then we're going to take our denominator, which is going to be the square root. So it's, it's the same as the previous section, except instead of using a lowercase sigma, we're using a lowercase s. Ah! Shoot, square root. <laughs> Made that a little too long there. Pen drag. Um, and there we go. Our uh, as our formula, taking subtracting our two averages, and then subtracting then zero. That's gonna, always going to be zero. Divided by the square root of our standard deviation squared, um, divided by our first sample size, plus our standard deviation squared. Uh, divided by our second sample size. Now these little subscripts there are just showing you that these are between the two groups there. That's uh, their first group and their second group, first group, second group. Alright, copy this down and let's go do our uh, problem. Um, you also may note that uh, this number here uh, is what's in the book and on my worksheet that might have been 171 so make sure you change that. We're looking at two counties in Pennsylvania. We're comparing them and there's the data. The data says that um, they have some ample, uh, these, these, these are their sizes of their, uh, of their farming land. That's their standard deviation between the eight uh, places we looked at and the 10 places we looked at and we're asking can there is there a significant difference according to an alpha of 0.05 now our null hypothesis is going to be that these averages are the same and our alternative hypothesis is that the averages are not the same so this is going to be a two-tailed test now um, looking at our alpha of 0.05 we have to first of all figure out our degree of freedom. Since this is a t-test, we have to use degrees of freedom. But we've got two different sample sizes. We have a sample size of 8 and a sample size of 10. So what are we going to use? We're going to use the smaller sample size because that will give us a, um, a much more um, difficult to get critical value. The critical value will be higher with the smaller sample size. So we're going to pick a sample size of 8. So our degrees of freedom is n minus 1 or 8 minus 1 which is 7. And therefore we're going to look at our two tail group on our chart. So on the left hand side of your chart where it says you know your degrees of freedom you're going to scroll down until you get to 7 and then you're going to scroll over. Now you'll notice at the top that there's two different places for a one tail and you're going to look at the two tail part and then scroll over to where it hits your our alpha of 0.05 and you'll see that on the table is 2.5 three six five and since this is a two tail we have to look at either the plus or the minus so if we find that our test value is bigger or smaller than two point three six five then we are going to reject the null hypothesis but if it's in between uh, positive or net you know if it's if it's less than 
2.365 or greater than negative 2.365, then we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. Going to the formula, I'm going to take 191 minus 199. Now again, order doesn't matter since we're choosing, you know, um, we're choosing a two-tailed test. Um, so we're going to subtract zero from that. And then we're going to have our square root in the denominator. Um, our first standard deviation was 38, and our first sample size was 8. Our second standard deviation was 12, and our second sample size was 10. Um, doing our process of the numerator, get negative 8. In the denominator, we have 180.5 plus 14.4 which makes, if I simplify this a little bit more, before I, you know, you can do all this on the calculator, but I'm just, you know, trying to show you, you know, all the pieces, all the steps here. Um, there, we're going to have an answer of negative 0.57, or 57 hundredths. Now, we're going to go to our step four. Uh, it's nice to draw a picture here. Uh, it turned out good. So this is at negative 2.365. This is a positive 2.365. My point didn't show up. All right, so shade that in a little bit. And we ask, is this inside the critical region? No, it's not inside the critical region. No, 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 no. It's um, negative 0.57. Since it's not in the critical region, our result for step five is, oh, whoa, I, I drew that in the wrong spot here. Negative 0.57 should be a little bit more over here because zero is in the middle. So this is this is technically 0.57, um, and that's if I subtracted 199 from one from uh, 199 and 191. If I subtracted that in the other order, I would have gotten a positive 0.57. So either way, you're going to um, not reject the null hypothesis. Wow. Do not reject the null hypothesis because you are not bigger than 2.365. You are not less than negative 2.365. So don't reject it. Now we only have one more thing to do here before the video is over. And we're going to take the same data, since this is a two-tailed test, and we're going to apply the confidence interval. And again, confidence interval is explained in detail um, on the previous video. So I'm just going to go through the problem and show you the formula. Just like the uh, Z uh, the Z formula, the T formula, is exactly the same, with the exception that, you know, instead of looking at your Z chart, you're going to look at your T chart. And um, instead of standard deviation, we use, a, we use the standard deviation notation with a small letter S. So it's the same thing, and we're checking just like we did on the previous problem. If our answer um, is includes zero, we will not reject the null hypothesis. Now we have just done this problem on the previous side and we didn't reject the null hypothesis and this is going to come up the same way because we're still looking for a, that five per, that alpha being 0.05. So just putting the numbers into the problem plus or minus. Now here's where the fun part begins because where do I go to get you know my, my T alpha al, uh, T <laughs> this should be, I put Z. Uh, it should be an alpha. What was I thinking there? Uh, where am I going to get my alpha divided by 2? Well, you know, you just go to your table, you know, look up your degrees of freedom, and we choose the smaller one, which is 8 minus 1 of 8. Ah, 8 minus 1 of 7, and that's going to give us our uh, critical value of 2.365, just like we did on the previous page. So, everything's going to pretty much you know, be cut and paste from the previous page just because we're using the problem from and the data from the previous sets. But when you do your homework problems, you'll notice that, you know, you'll have to do things from scratch and uh, use your um, answer guides and my emails to, you know, ask questions. And again, I'm just kind of, you know, simplifying each part one piece at a time, and and you could have seen that on the previous side, but just to show the work out, if you pause the video and want to go back and check your work, all right, and we finally get down to the point where it's negative 8 plus or minus 33.02. So what I'm going to do is split this up into negative 8 minus 33.02, 
and negative 8 plus 33.02. So I can say within 95% confidence that my mu minus mu is going to be between this value, which is negative 41.02, and this value here, which is 25.02. Now, the question becomes, is zero between here and here? And the answer is yes. One number is negative, one number is positive. Since zero is between our two values here, and our confidence value is that we are 95% confident that um, the two averages are zero, because look at our interval there, um, we do not reject. the null hypothesis. So same answer, different process, um, using the same kind of things that we've learned. Again, please email me uh, if you have any questions.